do an example problem. So we're going to find the solution. of y triple prime plus 2y double prime minus y prime minus 2y equals e to the 2x. So this is a constant coefficient linear uh, ODE. So you could go run back to 22, whatever section it was that we did these in, something like 22, and solve both those methods. Uh, looking on the right side, it's not a homogeneous, so you solve the homogeneous first, and then uh, this will have one linear independent derivative itself, and so you can find that coefficient uh, in front of that. So you can definitely solve it with those methods, but obviously we're not in that section anymore. So I don't want to use those methods to solve this equation right here. So I want to rewrite this in uh, the notation that we've been using, which is some polynomial operator on y equals e to the 2x. So I want you to think about what polynomial operator would operate on y and give me this. I'll help you get started. The constant coefficient is minus 2. I'll even write down the next one which I believe is minus 1d. So there's two more blanks you have to fill in. So there's going to be a d squared term and a d cubed term. So go ahead, do your best to write those down. So we got 2d squared and d cubed. So any questions about rewriting our ODE like this? So we're okay? So it's a little strange, but it's just a change of notation. However, why is this cool? Because we can uh, use all these techniques we just saw to solve it now. So let's factor this cubic right here. And I'm going to cheat and look how it factors here instead of factoring it out. So it factors like d minus 1, d plus 1, d plus 2. So if you multiply all that out, it will factor, or it'll, it'll turn into d cubed plus 2d squared minus d minus 2. So this is factored out into degree 1 factors. Oh, yeah, that was going to be a problem. Could we be solving a different problem if we kept going? All right. So what we're going to do is let u equal everything that I underlined right there. And now I'm going to rewrite it with that swapped out for a u. And now we will apply the operator. So we have y prime minus u prime minus u. Yes, u prime minus u equals e to the 2x. So we're trying to solve for u. <clears throat> so this is a degree 1 uh, ODE. It's no longer in x, but it's, or no longer in y, but it's still a degree 1 in u's and x's. So we're going to solve for u. And there's many ways to do this, but I will just, let's see.
Multiply by e to the negative x. So we got u prime. What if that is du dx? So on the right side, e to the 2x times e to the negative x is e to the 1x. You can solve this in different ways. I'm just going one way here. Um, and I think we have Bernoulli at this point. Having a very spacey day. So in my notes, I have multiplied by an integrating factor to make it exact. But you can go whichever way you want. You can definitely do that um, or follow along with what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use an integrating factor. Go rho <coughs> is integral px dx. Oh, e. e to the integral px dx. And our p of x is negative e to the negative x. Isn't it it's already exact, isn't it? So it's only more. It may be exact. I'm not believing my notes anymore. Because if you differentiate that with the mixed partial one, it comes out the same. It's just negative e to the negative x. So I think, I think actually my notes look like they use the reverse product rule, although it may have gone there in a slightly different way. So is that the same thing? So if we do the product rule here, we get du dx e to the negative x plus u times the derivative, which is negative e to the negative x. So we got that right there. So reverse product rule for the win. So let's go that way. And then we didn't do anything other than rewrite. So we still got e to the x on this side. And from here, we just integrate both sides. So the integral cancels the antiderivative, or the integral cancels the derivative. So we get u e to the negative x equals e to the x. We do need a plus c, and we'll just write it on the right side. So we're almost done solving for u. Just have to get that e to the negative x out. So we'll multiply by e to the x. So we have e to the 2x plus e to the x times c. Or maybe we'll write it c e to the x. All right, so we solve for u right there. There is going to be lots of ways to solve for u here. This is just a degree one problem. So you just have to use your cheat sheet and see, can, is this form, this form, this form, or this form? All right, so we solve for u. So any questions on that solution right there? And like I said, there's, there's going to be other ways to solve most of these as well. All right, so let's take that u and go to the original, and we're going to replace uh, u. We, we know what u is, so we're going to replace it with that. So there's u e to the 2x 
plus c e to the x. And then we're going to go back up where we got u from and plug that in for uh, what I have. Ooh. So let's rewrite our original with the u in place of what we subbed out. So we had that, and we solve for u. So we have that written down already, right below. So that's not what we need here. So the next thing I have in my notes, although I don't see exactly where it comes from, but hopefully we'll see that in a minute. So that is just that one right there. So we solve for u and just wrote down. Um, so that's what u equaled. And then we solve for u and put that solution on the right side. So what I have underlined is a new differential equation. I mean, it was directly based off the last one, but we basically knocked out a degree. So we went from degree 3 down to degree 2. And what we're going to do next is something really similar. We're going to pick the next inside derivative, and then we're going to call that v and solve for that. So I'll rewrite this below, and we'll keep going. I don't need the u equals part anymore. We'll just write the d plus 1, d plus 2, y equals e to the 2x plus c e to the x. So we're going to do the same process where we're going to pick this and say let v can't, well, you could reuse u because we're done using u basically it served its purpose but we'll just go with pick the next letter Yeah, we're gonna get a bunch more constants, so we might as well, yeah, call it. Instead, other, otherwise, we'll have like C and then C two, and C, we'll have C three eventually. So we'll call that guy constant one. All right, do your best to solve for v. So 
So no matter what, the first thing is probably v prime plus v. Just apply the operator. And then depending on what you're doing, it might be good to write dv dx instead of v prime. So my notes say this is also Bernoulli. All right, so why don't you take three minutes and see if you can solve this right here. So we're going to solve for V. And I'll come around and answer questions if you have them. So hopefully your cheat sheet's got Bernoulli. That's pretty. Uh, one of the pretty useful applicate or one of the most useful methods of solving these so it should be near the top of your cheat sheet or underlined or something. So if it's Bernoulli, your p function is 1 and your n is 0. So it's, in some sense, a trivial Bernoulli or an easy Bernoulli. Although it's so trivial, it doesn't look like it's Bernoulli. So in our case, our degree of the Bernoulli, or the order, when they probably use one of those two words, the value of n is 0, because there's no multiply by v on the right side. I just rewrote Bernoulli with v's instead of y's. So it was one less thing I had to think about. So that's the Bernoulli written with v's. We don't have a function in front of v. That's OK. You, the function in front of it is just 1, the constant functional 1. And there is no times v over here. So if you write it in, it's v to the 0 power. So we're going to multiply by e to the x. You also multiply by some constant. Is that right?
So integrate both sides. VE to the X equals one third E to the three X plus C one over yeah you know, over two E to the two X plus C two. And we gotta solve for V, so we're gonna multiply by E to the negative X. We got one third e to the two x plus c one over two e to the x plus c two e to the negative x. So that is our v right there. What's that? So what I didn't do is write the, I integrated, but I didn't write the dx dx. So the integral cancels the derivative. What about the, the e of x about that though? That it's the reverse part. Oh, how, like why is the, how did I go from this line down to here? So let's get the integral out. So yes, it is the reverse product rule, which is, it takes a little while to see it, but what is the derivative of, like apply the derivative on the bottom. So you'll get V prime E to the X, or DV times E to the X, well DV DX times E to the X, plus uh, V times the derivative of E to the X, which is, which is E to the X times V. And the orders are a little bit reversed, but, um, that's the reverse product rule. Well, it's technically the product rule. You're just going the opposite direction. I want to call it the factor rule, but it doesn't sound the most intuitive. So if these are tricky, I recommend go back through and do some more Bernoulli problems. Strongly recommend that. That's probably the most useful thing you learned from degree one ODEs was Bernoulli. So if you can't apply Bernoulli quickly, you should go and practice some more of those. That's probably the most important section. So we got our V. Now we're going to do is plug this in where we made our actual substitution. So up above somewhere, here's our V. V equals the stuff. So I'm going to fill in what we just wrote down for V. I can't fit it on the screen. So let me just copy this below. So V equals D plus 2Y. And now filling in our V, 1 third E to the 2X. You could adjust C1, because C1 divided by 2 is just a new constant. So you could just write C1 divided by 2 with C1. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we don't have to make another substitution. We don't need to make it some W substitution like we just did. We're already in a degree one differential equation. So all we have to do is solve a degree one right now. <coughs> so here we're going to have y prime plus 2y. Um, normally we write our the differential part on the left usually. So I'll write it y prime plus 2y equals all this mess right here. So this will also be Bernoulli. So that's a degree zero Bernoulli. So go ahead and solve it in that way.
And I I'll keep this on the screen so you have the Bernoulli stuff written up there. Any questions on this step here? And of course, what are we going to do next? On the left side. Take a derivative. You're actually untaking the derivative. Integrate. I guess you could say it's integrating. I don't really, I don't know what the name of the We're doing the anti-product rule is what we're doing. I don't. There's a really good way to say that. I mean, if you do the product, well, you're taking derivatives. So technically, we're taking an antiderivative. <coughs> so <coughs> we get ddx of y e to the two or y times e to the two x. And for me, these are always easier to check if you got it right, as opposed to finding some algorithm to get it. So derivative is going to be y prime e to the 2x. We got that right here, y prime times e to the 2x. And our second term is y times e to the 2x times 2, which is our second term right up there. So it's not easy to go this direction unless you've done this a lot of times. It's easy to uh, see where you came from, not easy to see where you're going. So from here, integrate both sides, and that'll be uh, the solution right there. So we'll just go integrate, integrate, y e 2x equals 1 12th e to the 4x plus c1 over 3 e to the 3x. C2 e to the x plus c3. And finally, we're multiplying by e to the negative 2x, 1 12th e to the 2x, c1 over 3, e to the 1x. This e to the x becomes e to the negative x, plus c3 e to the negative 2x. And you can do another renaming of your constant coefficient c1 if you want to. Yeah, so a lot of the problems have lots of ways to solve them. So just because we're solving it this way does not mean it's the only way to solve it. So I think I, I said that right when, we fir when I first wrote that problem on the board. Not that one. This one right here. This was the same form of all, almost all the problems from chapter, uh, section 22. 
And you can even use probably variation of parameters as well. Ronsky, and there's lots of ways to solve this. Uh, mainly because it's not a terribly complicated differential equation. I mean, as far as differential equations go, it's not too bad. It's got constant coefficients. It doesn't get much better than that in the world of differential equations. So we wouldn't be able to find the constants? We would if we had three initial conditions. So this is our family of solutions. Oh. Uh, the non, the term that you might be thinking about is that guy right there. That's the particular part. Okay. So that would be, if I wrote it out, that would be the yp plus all this stuff right here is the yc. So your YC should have the same number of constants as your degree, unless something weird happened. And then your particular solution is set by, if we started out with a different function on this, well, if it wasn't E to the AX, we'd, it'd be much more difficult to do. But if this is E to the 4X, that would have changed our, uh, well, it may have changed some other things too, but that number in front, it would have changed. The, yeah, so I kind of ignored. Ignore the one half. The point is, this is a number to be determined later. Sure. So if I've written it as C1 over 3, and you've written it as C1 over 6, and he's written it as C1, we'll just have slightly different values for our. But that, when I plug that number in, like let's just say it was 12 in, in this form, then yours would have been, you know, 12 over 3 is 4. So if somebody else just called it C1, they would have gotten 4, and you would have gotten you know, some other number. Sure. But when you plug it back in, you should all get the same you know, form of your answer. Right, so if, so if I get down here and get that C1 is 12, if you have to be careful, am, am I plugging it in for that C1 or for the one I wrote above? Right. So the way I avoid this problem is I, I would go and write this guy as C1 and then not when I f was actually finding constant values, I would use this form, not run back up and use some other form that has a different, that's a danger with using, reusing C1 for different things. Mm -hmm. When you plug in, you gotta know what form, which of those you're using. So it might be better to not rename constants. Um, or just know, oh, when I, when I get values, I'm gonna use this form right here. So this should have been mildly confusing but at the same time, kind of interesting. So let's try to write down a general algorithm to how in the world are we gonna apply this. So here's our general technique. So you have your polynomial operator, nth degree. You get the constant coefficient out. So you divide everything by a n. So your first, uh, your leading term is just d to the n power. Um, maybe I should write the second term because we're going to factor an a n out of all of these terms. So our next term is a n minus 1, d n minus 1. Sorry about that. I want the pattern to be clear. So our first, when we factor the n out, we get dn plus a n minus one over a n, dn minus one plus et cetera, et cetera, a zero over a n. So we're factoring out a n, so we're dividing all the other terms by a n to do so. And you never let your leading coefficient be zero, or else you have a lower degree polynomial than you've written down. So if you're leading, if your an zero, you don't have an nth degree. You got some lower degree. So once you have it like this, then you factor your polynomial. So how do you factor a nth degree polynomial? I think I've made you do it this quarter. 
What's that? So the complete square and quadratic work great if your degree is 2. And if you're lucky and your degree is 2, you can just straight factor. But what happens if your degree is 3 or more? Rational zero theorem. So I will do my best to give you nice polynomials that have zeros like plus, minus, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm not going to try to give you crazy polynomial. So I'll pick a polynomial that factors as nicely as, it, as I can make it without being trivial. So we're going to factor this. <coughs> So it's going to look like d minus r1, d minus r2, d minus rn. Of y equals, ooh, and we're also going to get this an out of here. So we'll divide by an. So it's going to be q of x divided by an. Oh, that q of x over a n looks familiar. Not a coincidence. OK, so once we have it in this form, it's, gonna, it's looking more similar to the problem that we just solved. So the problem we just solved was basically a degree 3 version of this. We didn't have an a n. We had to move out of there first. So how do we solve this? Let's look back at what we did. So here we go. Step one, we factored. And then we grouped up everything except the most outside derivative. So we'll go, I don't know how many of these we're going to be doing. Well, we're going to do n of these. So we'll go, u, we'll call this u1. So let u1 equal all this stuff, d minus r2 d minus r3, all the way down to d minus rn. And this, oops. yeah, u equals that. So we have a degree 1 ODE. But our variable is u, not y. So you solve this for u1. And what you're going to get is a uh, general and a particular solution. So you get some particular plus a general or a homogeneous. You're also, your particular solution is going to look like this. That's supposed to be an R1 times x. I'm writing a subscript in an exponent. So that's r1 times x, the same r1 that's right here. That'll be a particular plus your, oh no, it's supposed to be your homogeneous solution. So you get some yp plus your homogeneous will be in this form. You won't need to memorize this. You just do that process that we did three times in a row, and that will be your um, solution there. So that's u1. All right, so once you have u1, you're going to um, plug in that where you see u1. Oh, I forgot to write one. It's important that we put a Y at the end of that, or else 
or else that's just a polynomial operator. Yeah, so u1 was all that stuff. Yeah, so once we have u1, we can Ah, we're just going to rewrite it out. So we got d minus r2, d minus r3, d minus rn y equals, so this was u1, and I'm going to plug in the solution that we just got right here. And you play the same trick another time where you take the uh, inner, you just leave out the outer derivative, the last derivative. So let u2 equal this. And then rewrite d minus r2 u2 equals whatever you had on the right side. and solve this, and you repeat this process as many times as you have degrees. So we had degree three, so we had to do three of these. You had degree four, do four of them, et cetera, et cetera. This process is tricky because it's new. It's not tricky because it's inherently tricky. Just like learning derivatives were difficult at the very beginning, but now when you hear the product rule, you're like, oh, of course, obviously. So tricky when you first learn it, not tricky after you've been doing it for a while.